Hello, my name is Nobi Nakamura, Program Officer at the Japan Foundation Toronto. Thank you very much for joining us for a special talk, part of the Healthy Hakko, the Fermented Culinary Arts of Japan a series. So this talk is in conjunction with the documentary film, The Genealogy of Sake, directed by Kaori Ishii, which is also screening online during this time. The fermented beverage known as Japanese sake is filled with the spirit of the Japanese sake brewers, or toji. The history of sake goes back 2,000 years, and its brewing process is painstakingly detailed and complex. Today, we have special guests, future filmmaker Kaori Ishii and sake sommelier and sake samurai, Michael Tremblay. Um, and also, together with Kaori is her sister, Sakurako Nakazato, who will be interpreting. Um, and together we will discuss uh, sake and the documentary, The Genealogy of Sake. Um, the film uh, follows the lives of artisans who dedicate their lives to brew the perfect drop of sake. The 2015 documentary was directed by Kaori Ishii and it was uh, narrated by Tomoe Shinohara. The beautiful film was filmed in the biogeographically diverse Noto Peninsula, which is part of the Ishikawa Prefecture. It meticulously follows the intense six-month period of the uh, sake production and focuses on the toji of this region. Please allow me to share a little bit more about the director of the film. Kaori Ishii graduated with a degree in philosophy from the University of the Sacred Heart. She made her directorial debut in 2006 with the documentary Meguru, which follows the artisans of Mokuhan Zome, the oldest pattern dyeing technique in Japan. After that, she studied under documentary filmmaker Sumiko Haneda. She has produced and directed documentary films on the theme of traditional culture and craftsmanship, which have screened in Japan and abroad. Since 2009, she has been a regular visitor to the Noto Peninsula and was invited to direct the sake-themed documentary, The Genealogy of Sake, which is screened at the Milan International Expo in 2015 and the Hawaii International Film Festival in 2016. Uh, she was also involved in developing the charm of the region and people of Noto, many whom uh, she had met through the film from various perspectives, such as food events, um, brewery tours and workshops. Thank you very much for joining us all the way from Tokyo. Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello everyone. My name is Kaori Ishii and thank you for Japan Foundation Toronto, especially Mr. Nobi. And I'm really glad to be shown my movie and be invited to this talk session. <laughs> and here is my sister Sakurako. <laughs> this is <laughs> Sakurako. Thank you, Kaori san um, uh, and Sakurako san. Um, so now let me introduce um, our next guest, uh, Michael Tremblay, who is joining us from uh, Toronto. Um, so, Michael is a uh, <laughs> Sake Samurai, <clears throat> he's a sake sommelier and international kikizake shi, uh, advanced sake professional, French wine scholar, and holder of the WSET Level 3 Award in Wine and Sake. He is a uh, senior sake judge for the International Wine Challenge, largest uh, sake challenge in the world, uh, and it's held in London and Japan. And Michael is an active sake educator, uh, and he's based in Toronto and teaches at the Independent Wine Education Guild, and currently runs the largest sake program in Canada as a sake sommelier at Toronto's Key Modern Japanese and Bar. Um, so yeah, Michael, um, do you want to uh, share a little bit more about yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Tremblay. Um, Thank you for the introduction, Nobi-san uh, and Kaori-san. 
Sakurako, uh, it's nice to meet you and, um, and talk about this beautiful film that I just finished watching this last weekend. Uh, glad to, to get the sneak peek in before um, the rest of Toronto and Canada gets to see it. Um, it was such a wonderful film. Uh, first off, it resonated with me just because um, maybe seven years ago uh, on a trip to Japan, I made sake at, at a number of breweries. And um, it really, the film really brings you back to what it feels like to make sake in a sake brewery. Um, now, with that said, um, it was very, very hard work. Uh, and it's a, I still marvel at how these 75, 80 year old Toji can make it look so easy um, at the sake brewery uh, to do what they're doing. So, um, my thought uh, when I was invited to uh, speak to you. Uh, uh, on behalf of the Japan Foundation is to, I, I thought of a few aspects um, that I could uh, uh, put together that would allow viewers of the film to get that much more out of the, um, the documentary, because the documentary ha is so rich in information. Um, and I got so much out of it because of my knowledge of sake and, and have, having traveled to Ishikawa. But so I wanted to point out a few things to look out for in the film uh, when, you're, when you finally get to, uh, to see it here. So I'm going to share my screen um, and we'll go into um, a, a quick presentation on um, some of the just a few aspects about sake and then Ishikawa in particular. So um, really, uh, you know, the, the documentary does it really well at talking about what sake is all about. It's made with rice, water, kojikin, yeast, and, and sometimes brewer's alcohol. Um, but what, um, you know, as I alluded to, the, these master brewers take these uh, predominantly four ingredients, the four ingredients on the left, and can make magic with it. You're using two ferment, you're, you're basically using two microorganisms in the same tank to make sake. It's extremely difficult. It's much more difficult than making wine where you have grapes, grape, the yeast uh, is, you know, on the grape skins and it comes into the winery and you crush those and fermentation occurs naturally. In sake making, if you don't have the right balance between the koji keen and yeast in the tank and doing their things, uh, you know, you run into problems and off flavors. So we'll talk a little bit about the these ingredients quickly. And right now there's about 113 shuzo kotakimai. So there's, that means that there's 113 rice strains in Japan specifically cultivated just for sake making. Um, that's pretty incredible considering, uh, you know, the, the size of Japan and all these different, but it, it really represents all these different pockets um, of uh, Japan's climate and geography that affect uh, the different rice uh, plants in different ways. And, and um, you know, a plant, a, a rice that grows well in Ishikawa prefecture might not do so well in the southern climate of Kyushu, for instance. And so that's why there are so many of these. And just to give you an idea, I put this together a few years ago and it's, it's, um, it, it gives you an idea, right? Just one quick visual mental uh, image of how many rice strains there are in Japan for sake making. And this isn't including all the, the myriad of table uh, strains that are out there as well uh, that brewers are using. And all of this has to do with the different climates, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, now, water is another really important ingredient and Japan is water rich. Um, there's no shortage of water um, from snow melt and also in the typhoon season and the rain season in the summertime, uh, all this water. And what happens is a lot of that water cap uh, is captured into the mountains uh, that, you know, kind of form the spine of the, the backbone of the main island of Honshu and also the other islands. And it percolates, it filters. Think of it like a coffee filter. Uh, that water kind of makes its way slowly to the, um, to the different breweries. And it's so pure and pristine when it does and is perfect. Now, um, there's, uh, I, there is a difference between soft and hard water. Um, generally, this water in Japan is on the soft side. Um, but um, the, uh, 
uh, you know, in Ishikawa Prefecture, and we'll talk a bit, a bit more about that in a minute, it, the water's a little bit on the harder side, and, and it, it, it uh, contributes to this unique uh, um, profile of the sake that you would find from Ishikawa. Uh, Kojikin is one of those really magical microbes in the sake world that uh, helps create the magic. Uh, I alluded to winemaking, and in winemaking you have sugar. Uh, and if you have sugar already, yeast can start fermenting that sugar and, and making alcohol. That's how fermentation happens. Now in rice, you have a problem. You don't have any sugar in the rice, uh, but you do have all kinds of starch. And so starch molecules, uh, are basically long uh, chains of glucose molecules that can be chopped down using kojikin uh, into fermentable sugars. And that's where kojikin comes in. And it's not just used in sake making, it's used for miso making, uh, shoyu making, uh, shochu making. Um, so there's a, a number of different uses for it in the, uh, in the world of um, Japanese culinary delights and, and, and its beverages. Um, really for the, mo uh, for the mo primary uh, purpose of this really you just need to remember that this is micro magical microbe number one so koji keen is going to break down the starches into sugars in the tank and then we have yeast um, yeast is the other magical microbe and that breaks down those sugars and ferments the sugar into alcohol um, and these two are working in tandem in the same tank and so it's very complicated and so one thing I want you to appreciate when you watch this film and you watch these master craftsmen these master toji at work and how effortlessly they are working they are making it look so easy but they're working with two microbes that have to that have to be working per, in perfect unison for uh, for, you know, to, to, to develop a sake that's perfect and, uh, you know, delicious at the end of the day. Now, um, and one of the reasons there's so many yeast strains, uh, kind of like rice strains, is um, there's different profiles. This is part of the Toji's arsenal, the master brewer's arsenal, uh, depending on if they want to create a sake that has less acidity or more acidity or more aromatics or less aromatics, more uh, apple uh, and pineapple or more melon and, uh, you know, pear, uh, you know, these kind of yeasts are going to affect the type of sake that they can make. Uh, and it, it will, it will have other repercussions as well in that, that uh, how it behaves in the tank will mean that uh, the brewer is always having to use their int intuition and, and, and make sure that everything is in, in, uh, in balance or in, in some kind of an equilibrium. Now, uh, I mentioned all that rice, all those rice strains. Well, on that periodic table of sake rice, what was really important to note is that all of them, this common element is that they have a shimpaku uh, or a starch heart. So it means that all the starch in the rice moves into the middle of the grain uh, and the fats and proteins surround it. That means that the brewers can control how much of that fat and protein they can remove uh, when they're making sake. And so in, in a nutshell, if you're um, uh, removing more of it, uh, you get less ricey, less savory qualities in the sake. If you leave more of that rice on, you can expect more of that savory quality, more of that cereal driven uh, character of the rice to come through. Um, in terms of the grades, um, you have futsushu, which is basically ordinary or, or non-premium sake. And then everything above that is considered premium or sake specific uh, or um, sorry, um, uh, special designation sake. Um, so futsushu, it comprises a lot of what you would find in local areas of Japan. Um, and even here, it's, it's the bulk of what is consumed um, just because it's, it, it's more economical. Uh, I think a lot of people would love to drink daiginjo and junmai daiginjo and you know premium grades on a regular basis, but they're mu much more expensive because one thing is that when you get into the the premium realms, uh, you're using more and more expensive rice. You're using higher grade rice, uh, higher grades of rice, uh, and so you can take one of those rice strains that was on that periodic table, and that grain uh, is not just that one grain, it's, it's graded into a variety of different levels. Uh, and so depending on how special the sake you're making is going to be, uh, you're going to buy the 
the the rice that uh, you know is, is going to be the best that you can afford at the brewery to make it. And I know in um, the genealogy of sake, we talk uh, about some of the special sakes um, that uh, some of the brewers are making uh, or for sake competition. And usually that th those sakes are made with some really premium rice like Yamada Nishiki, which is one of the best rice strains in the, in in Japan for making sake. Uh, as you can see with the the, the pyramid here, uh, I have it divided into two halves in the premium. You have the alcohol added and then the non-alcohol added. Both of them have used the same names, uh, so Dai Ginjo and Ginjo, but on the uh, lower side of the pyramid, uh, you have Han Jozo, and I have it divided into two halves. We're not going to get into that right now, but one of the things you want to look out for is if you want the more fruity sides of sake, look out for Ginjo or Dai Ginjo, um, those buzzwords. Uh, and if you want the more savory side of sake, the more, um, you know, where you, you're getting more of the ricey flavors coming through, look out for Honjozo or for Junmai. Um, and so Junmai has two meanings. One, uh, it means that there's no added alcohol in the brewery, uh, in the sake. So it means that in that bottle of sake that you have, the alcohol uh, is primary, is only made from the, um, uh, from the from the fermentation, there's no distilled alcohol added. Whereas, if you don't see the word Junmai, you can expect that they've added some distilled alcohol. Now, uh, let's we're going to just pivot here a little bit because the genealogy of sake talks more about how sake is made as well, and I don't want to spoil that thunder. Uh, just to giving you a few uh, uh, bullets to think about when you're you're looking at the film. Now, um, but. I think it's also important to know when you're watching this beautiful documentary as to where Ishikawa is, where the Noto Peninsula is, because it's a really beautiful area. It's uh, beautifully captured in the film, but also it's um, it's a really unique area that I, I think you really want to um, to um, to know a little bit more about, and you'll you'll appreciate the film that much more. So uh, first off, look at let's just zoom out into space here and looking in at Japan. You know, it's right in the middle of the Ring of Fire. So the Ring of Fire is a very vol volatile uh, volcanic um, and tectonic activities going on in this area. It goes all the way down to New Zealand, up to Japan, across the Pacific Basin and down the west coast of the Americas. And what it does is it creates a lot of um, volcanic activity in Japan. As you can see, there's a lot of active volcanoes. Uh, believe it or not, at one point, um, you know, a few years ago, I mapped out all the active volcanoes in Japan. This is roughly where they are. And they're basically following the tectonic plates. So basically underneath Japan, you have three tectonic plates that are kind of playing a, a, a bit of a game, uh, you know, underneath a bit of a tug of war game, so to speak. And so what it happens is it creates earthquakes. It creates uh, this volcanic activity. And this is how Japan was formed. Um, now, Another unique aspect I put in here for uh, the purpose of the genealogy of sake is there's some beautiful imagery in the movie of snowfall. Um, there's actually, it, it, one of my favorite things about Japan is going to bring, uh, when I'm usually visiting Japan, it's in the, in the winter time, in the brewing season. So usually in January, February, where you know, you're in the colder winter months. And if you're visiting the West Coast of Japan, there's going to be no shortage of snow. I've made sake at a few breweries on the West Coast where it snowed two meters in a five day stretch. And it was nothing to really remark uh, about uh, amongst the locals. It was, it was normal to get that much snow. Uh, for me, it was amazing. It was really beautiful. And a lot of it has to do with this uh, phenomenon called the Siberian High. So you see this lake up in Siberia here in Russia called Lake Baikal. That lake is the largest lake in the world. You can fit all five Great Lakes into that lake and still have room to spare. It's something like 26,000 cubic kilometers of volume in that lake. Now, what happens in the winter time is cold air comes down from the Arctic and Siberian, or sorry, something called the Siberian High, these pressure systems basically take that cold air and you know, push it towards Japan. And what happens is, uh, in between Japan and the main continent of Asia, uh, you have the Sea of Japan here. And the Sea of Japan is a warm water. Um, it, you get a lot of warm currents, the Tsushima current coming in from the south that warms up the water. And so you got this warm water and this cold air 
and they create the perfect storm of snow. Uh, and as you can see, there's all kinds of snow on that west side. Um, a lot of it is called, some uh, often called Yukiguni, uh, so snow country because of all that snow. And as you can see, on the east side, uh, you have a bit of a snow shadow. Um, the mountains in the middle of Japan kind of protect the east side from, uh, from the worst of that weather. Now, Ishikawa is, uh, and the Noto Peninsula is in this. It's it kind of towards the bottom. I can't really point, uh, and, and you can't really see what I'm pointing at, but it's right in there, and we'll, you'll see in a minute where it is. So let's get into Ishikawa. So Ishikawa is, um, one of my, uh, some of my favorite sake in Japan is from here. So I was very excited to, uh, to be able to watch this documentary uh, and learn about these really famous uh, master brewers and also the people that they've been, uh, that have uh, been apprentices of these master brewers and become master brewers themselves. It's this really beautiful lineage of, of artisanal uh, makers, uh, especially for sake making, um, it's 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 really cool to see these these um, these people in action. So uh, there's a couple of buzzwords. So first off, um, Noto and Kaga are two of the old names for Japan, and Noto is still used uh, quite uh, prevalently. And you'll see why it's the the peninsula, but it's also the name of the toji, the, the guild um, that these five, these four master craftsmen comes from uh, in the film. And so it's important to note that the noto is a, a place, and these these this this guild kind of derives from this area of Japan that's really special. Um, and a couple of other things about Ishikawa worth note noting is uh, um, it, it, it obtained the first uh, geographical indication um, for a small area, uh, a small group of brewers in the Hakusan area. Um, and it's the, uh, in 2005, it became the first geographical indication for sake for, uh, for, for some of its uh, brewers in Ishikawa. Uh, Yamagata actually was uh, the next up for prefecture-wide geographical indication, and that was a full decade later. Uh, and so, um, you know, really there's a lot of, it just shows that there's a lot of special things going on in Ishikawa. Um, Kanazawa Kobo or Kanazawa yeast is very famous as well. It's a very well-known yeast and it, it makes some fantastic sake. It's used prevalently in Ishikawa, but there's all kinds of brewers outside of Ishikawa that use this, this really famous yeast. And then I mentioned Hakusan and the Hakusan GI. Well, Hakusan is a famous mountain range in the southeast corner of Ishikawa that's very famous, one of the most famous mountains in Japan, next to Mount Fuji, of course. Um, and uh, it's um, it, it it all that snow that comes down from Lake Baikal and and this across the Sea of Japan uh, is one of the reasons why Hakusan is is well known in the sake world is because Hakusan captures a lot of this snow and that snow melt kind of is distributed to breweries in the, in the Hakusan area. And some of the brewers that we're talking to in the gene genealogy of sake are working at breweries in this area as well, or have worked in, this, in these breweries. So it's, uh, it's, it's important to note that we're talking Noto as the predominant area of, um, of the film, but also the whole of Ishikawa is, is, uh, is really famous. Now you can see here, there's the Noto Peninsula. Okay, so the Noto Peninsula is the northern part of Ishikawa. And so this is where this, the, a lot of the magic of the film uh, takes place. And it's really important to know um, because uh, we, there's, there's talk of uh, rice cultivation, there's talk of uh, fishing. Um, you know, these, these, a, a lot of the toji in this area, one of the reasons they became toji in the first place was uh, after farming, uh, during the, the after harvest, uh, you know, you would go off and make sake. And, and a couple of, there's uh, a couple of the, the uh, master craftsmen, the, the four uh, gods of sake that are talked about in the film, you know, migrated to other parts of Japan uh, to learn some of their skills and brought this all back. And this is where the, the Noto became such a famous area for sake making. Um, now, in terms of uh, the, the profiles that you'd find in the sake in Ishikawa, 
Um, first off, it's usually rich, um, layered, uh, it's deep, it can be complex. Um, a couple of the main masters of, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the four main master brewers that are the focus of the genealogy of sake really pioneered Yamaha production, uh, making Yamaha and Yamaha. So we talked about Kojikin, we talked about yeast. Um, when you're making Yamaha sake, uh, you're introducing another microbe. Uh, you're using uh, uh, lactic acid bacteria to create this acidic environment for then the koji and the yeast to kind of do their thing in this tank. And so it's very complex, but when, you're, when you can master that, you can create even more depths to your sake. And in Ishikawa, um, the benchmark Yamaha sakes in Japan are arg arguably found um, and from the master craftsmen that are in the documentary. Um, the, um, I already mentioned the Hakusan Jiai. You can see this is the Tirori Gawa, the Tirori River. Uh, and it basically kind of winds up the Hakusan or Mount Haku um, and comes down to, uh, to the breweries in the area that use this fantastic water. And the water, uh, the groundwater from it, it generally is on the harder side. Um, most of the breweries uh, in, that are using this water, the water is quite deep. And so you got a pressure, uh, an increased pressure on that water, uh, you know, where it basically helps infuse more mineral uh, co components. And some of the breweries use a term called hyaku nansui, which is a uh, hundred year water. So they say that it takes a hundred years for that water to come from Mount Haku uh, and, and find their way into their wells that they can use for brewing. Uh, and it's very special water. And one of the reasons why uh, the Hakusan GI was, was formed. Um, there's Mount Haku right here, and it's really beautiful. Uh, if you're there, even in the late spring, you can see snow on it. Um, it's quite a majestic, majestic uh, group of peaks. And then lastly, the Noto Toji. Um, just to go back to this, because this is very, um, very important. Um, um, uh, Sakaguchi um, uh, Yukio, which is one of the uh, uh, master craftsmen that is talked about in uh, the genealogy of sake. Um, if you look at the one of his jackets, uh, has Sogen on it. Sogen uh, Shuzo is actually quite a famous brewery. It's the oldest brewery in the Noto uh, Peninsula. And it's also said to be one of the areas where, uh, or one of the breweries that where the Noto Toji comes from. Um, and so there's there's a lot of wonderful history uh, from this brewery and it's amazing it's it's amazingly captured in the documentary just watching this um, I was just in awe watching uh, you know these these brewers and what they're what they were able to achieve um, in their lifetimes lastly if you're into Ishikawa uh, sake and if you're looking for some there's there's no shortage and I'll, I'll show you a map in a minute of a few sakes you can look out for in Toronto to uh, to to purchase when you're enjoying the documentary. Um, but one of the cool things about Ishikawa is they've got one of the newest sake specific rice grains in Japan right now called Hyakuman Goku uh, no Shiro, which is a, uh, a sake rice for their daiginjo making. Um, and it was just uh, released. The, the first sakes uh, that brewers were releasing came out uh, in 2020. Um, and so not all things in the pandemic were bad. This is a good thing that happened, um, you know, during our, the, you know, last year's challenges. Um, Ishikawaman as well, it was the, uh, the other sake rice train there. And there's a few others that are really important that are grown on the West Coast, like Goyakaman Goku, that you can look out for, that are great for this drier style of sake. Okay, and lastly, these are the brewers and, um, uh, uh, Please disregard the bolded uh, information, but you know you can see Sogen Shuzo Hakuto Shuzo Ten up in the north uh, is uh, is featured in the film. Uh, Kiku Hime is um, it was the the brewery that Noguchi uh, uh, San uh, really um, you know became famous at um, back in the day. Shata Shuzo um, there's a uh, a couple of the brewers in in the uh, in the film that are consulting uh, Toji there. So uh, these are all great breweries to look out for. Uh, Tedorigawa as well is 
readily found in our market, Kikuhime as well, Tengumai as well, um, and Kagatobi, uh, the Fukumitsu Ashuzo. Um, unfortunately, that's about it for now, but my hope is with things like the genealogy of sake, um, there's going to be more Ishikawa sake coming in. There's going to be more interest in, in, in people trying this. Oh, also in Miyoya Shuzo, um, uh, we taught, you know, the genealogy of sake talks about uh, female brewers and um, they've, they've got a wonderful shacho at this brewery um, that is doing some great things at the brewery. Um, that, but that's for another talk. Anyway, with that said, I'll uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and we can we can talk as a group. Excellent, um, Michael San, that was uh, wonderful. That was great. Um, you know, um, thank you. Dug deep with the the region and and uh, connected a lot to the film. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, so um, I'm going to, I have some questions uh, that I'm going to um, ask uh, Kaori-san and Michael. Um, so I'm going to start with some questions for Kaori-san. Um, so what, what motivated you to, to make this uh, wonderful film? Um, ha have you been a, a fan of sake for, for a long time or, yeah, what, why did you make this wonderful film? Uh, あれが翻訳します。えっと、え、きっかけは能登半島の酒蔵の社長が能登の伝統文化の一つである酒造りについて映画を作ってほしいと依頼してきたのが映画を作ったきっかけです。took this movie uh, was a uh, man who was the president of sake corporation in Noto Peninsula had offered me to take a movie about sake making as a one of the traditional culture of Noto Peninsula. Yeah. I was in Noto Hanto and I was making a movie in Noto Hanto and I was making a movie in Noto Hanto. で、その番組を見た社長が、え、映画で能登半島を盛り上げることができると考えて、私に依頼しました。Before this movie, uh, I had took the documentary film about the artisans of making sea salt of Noto Peninsula. And I appeared on the TV shows at the time. Then uh, that guy uh, who was a president watched it and he felt that the documentary movie could spread attraction of that local area and not a parent had a problem of a deep po deep population so he wanted to spread attraction of this area by taking the sake documentary movie so あの、あの、魅力に、え、ま、恋をしていたので、え、喜んでその依頼を受けて映画を撮ることにしたんです。as for me, uh, I was really excited to that, that offer because I fell in love with uh not a peninsula, the nature, foods, uh, of course, sake, the cultures, the festivals and the people living there. So, uh, I was really happy to accept his offer. So um, the filming um, took place, uh, it looked like you followed um, the, uh, the brewers for a six month period, um, but in fact, how, how long was the uh, film production and, and right, right to the end of your film? How long, was, um, how long did it take to, to make your film? Um, and also, uh, when you did the filmmaking, did you have to travel uh, from back and forth from uh, from Tokyo to uh, to Noto Peninsula? Um, yeah, or, or did you end up um, um, 
living in um, in nearby the breweries. Uh, totally, it took two years and six months. The shooting period was about for two years. The shooting period was about for two years. The shooting period was uh, while a uh, sake making period, uh, I and my staffs had stayed the sake brewery with Toji and the craftsmen. The Nishukan, two weeks, Taizai stay, Futsuka Tokyo ni Modote, Mata Nishukan, Satsay Shinikuna, Sekatsdista. We stayed about for two weeks and we went back to Tokyo. <coughs> And we went back again to sake brewery for two weeks. The sake zukuri gai no omatsuri toka shizen no satsue o shite ita toki wa daita ishu kan gurai taizai shite mata Tokyo ni modoru to yuna kanji de hoite mashita. When I took their scenes, except making sake, for example, for the festival and the landscape of the nature, we stayed there about one week and we came back to Tokyo for two days and went back to uh, Noto for one week. Wow, so a lot of, lot of traveling and, and such a, a long, uh, dedicated, focused work. Um, that's, that's fantastic. You can really see it in the film. So, um, uh, so uh, I, I guess traveling must have been a challenge. Um, what, uh, what would you, what, um, if you, if, you, if you don't mind sharing, what was some of the like real uh, challenges that you had to consider uh, when you were making the film? Yes. Uh, one of the challenge uh, of this movie, uh, I selected young people as the staffs. I directed four movies, including this one, uh, but uh, the other three movies, I uh, hired uh, senior staff, like uh, 30 years older than I. But, uh, so she uh, the brewery uh, was very uh, cold, too cold, but uh, the mold phenomenon firmament, uh, firm, firmament room is very hot and wet, so, and we couldn't sleep more than two hours. So I realized that the most important thing in this project was uh, staff's health, physical health. So that's why I decided to select young people. Mm -hmm. うん。で、彼らはあの経験はあの過去のね、前のスタッフよりはないけれど、え、その分年が近いからものが言いやすかったということと、あとまあ、知恵を出し合って支え、サポートし合ったというのが、まあ、良かったと思います。Although that staffs were inexperienced, uh if compares to the very experienced uh, old staffs, but uh, they could uh, speak to me freely and uh, we could share the ideas and support each other. Mm. Eh, 
あのカメラマンと私の,あの話し合いで全部撮ろうと決めました。And one more、uh, challenge, challenge uh, is uh, to shoot in whole、uh, scenes as、uh, we cannot select which scene is、um, important or not as、uh, uh, a Kojikin in the East、uh, living. So it's very hard、uh, and they are changing、uh, from day to day. So,、uh, We cannot choose or they cannot wait for us. So,、um, we, I, and a cinematographer decided to shoot everything. So, no, Kekka, Nanto, Sambiakuji Kaijo, Mo, Satsi, Shishima. So, so、uh, the whole shooting time was over 300 hours. <laughs> wow, s o g o y That's pretty epic. Amazing.、Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, well, that kind of、um, it, that's, that's pretty amazing.、Um, uh, those, those challenges、uh, that you faced and, and, and you're able to overcome them,、um, that's, that's great. Thanks for sharing that.、Um, actually, that ties into、um, one of the other questions I had was、um, um, what would, because of the insane sort of like,、uh, Timing of, of when things begin and when things end, and the intensity of the, of the sake、uh, brewing process.、Um, what would a, a typical、um, schedule look like in, in a day of the filming? When would you start and when would you finish? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. その酒造りの工程を全部映,画映像でつなぎました。それも映像だと。あの多分マイケルさんもよくわかると思うんだけどもタンクの中にこう白いブクブクしているものがずっと映ってるだけであのそれに対してどう変化が起きているのか味の変化菌がどう変化しているのかっていうのは映像で伝えるのはすごく難しくて、えー、多分それは違うって途中で思った思ったんですね。Uh, but uh, in video, as Michael knows,、uh, the scene was just white bubble is bubbling, and that's all. So、uh, <laughs> it's very hard to explain how it's changing or how the taste is、uh, changing. So、uh, then we noticed that、uh, just the bubble scene doesn't work anything. So we changed after that. No, no, the, uh, no, the, 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 職人さんが、えー、何にこう一喜一憂しているのかあと先輩から何を受け取ってそれをどう表現したいのかっていう心の葛藤を描くということにシフトチェンジをしてあの酒造りの最初から最後までっていうことにあんまりあのなんていうかとらわれることはもうやめたんです。So after that,、uh, we decided not to ch- chasing around how to sake only, but the、uh, artisan's way of learning how to make sake,、uh, how to communicate with the elderly or well known about well known people.、Um, so uh, we, uh, after that, we didn't focus too much on just making sake, but the、uh, artisan's way of living. Yeah, you can really get the, a sense of that、um, in your film where it's not just focused just on, on, the, on the Moromi bubbles. <laughs> you know?、um, and, and you really get to,、uh, get to know the people the, the, and, and the, the, the generations,、um, as Michael had mentioned before, like how they're really trying to transfer that knowledge and, and, and sort of some of the personality of the, of the masters as well. Yeah. 
so um, uh, another question uh, for both of you. Um, so right at the, at the beginning of the film, um, it opens with that, that snow scene like, like it is today in Toronto. Um, yeah. And uh, there's a ritual offering to the gods. Um, is this a, a common practice at psychic breweries? Um, is there like a really strong connection to the sort of spiritual world? Um, I guess my understanding is the, the Toji are, are considered protectors of the land and the environment. So um, yeah, I, I'd be happy to hear your, your thoughts are on that. Mm. あの、神様への真実として日本酒はまずあの存在しているというふうに考えている人ばかりでした。Yes, all oh, the sake breweries I know uh treat sake uh, as an uh, offering to God. え、えっと、ま、多分その ベーシックな部分には日本人が米作りの文化、稲作文化で生きてきたっていうところがあの、大きく影響していると思ってます。And uh, I think uh, this is based of the Japanese uh, people's way of living are uh, based on uh, rice. で、あの、だけど酒は米をまず削って溶かして、なおかつ食べるんじゃなくて飲むっていうお腹に溜まるものじゃなくて飲み物として飲むっていうことで、あのとてもやっぱりあの贅沢な行為だなって思ってます。uh, if we eat rice itself, we can uh, satisfy and we can keep life goes on. But uh, drinking sake is has another aspect, so uh, it's very uh, luxurious, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, um, Michael San, did you have you did you notice this um, that sort of uh, that sort of spiritual connection at at some of the breweries you you visited? Yes, I mean the spiritual connection is 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 everywhere. I mean it, it's even even the sugidama when you come into a, mm -hmm. a, a sake brewery is connected, you know, with ancient mystical um, traditions, um, and every brewery I've I've worked at has a uh, <coughs> mini shrine set up in the Moromi, uh, usually the Moromi room, uh, and it's you know the my understanding is that at the beginning of the the brewing season they they will toast uh, they will give an offering to the gods um, and there's sometimes a little bottle of sake up on the uh, pedestal with the with the shrine so everything is connected with that it's paying respect it's also um, you know going back to the the whole idea of the toji being the stewards of the land um, it, it there's this really strong connection between that and there's you get the feeling that no one is really uh, taking it for granted. It's it's really important, and you know even if you look at in, if if you are on Instagram and you follow a lot of sake breweries over the last few months, um, a lot of them have Shinto priests coming to the brewery to do blessings, uh, and all the brewers are there. All the kurabito are in the room, all you know you know paying attention and and being part uh, part of this ceremony uh in, in in for the for the for the year the one thing in the genealogy of sake that i found really interesting that i've never seen is the at the beginning the shinto uh, priest bringing the tree out into the uh cl the snow clearing I i'm assuming that's a rice field and that was to bless the rice field yes yes yeah uh there is the rice field uh tamada uh, like a, 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 like
、えー、あのエリア独特の習慣です。The start,、uh, the first scene of that movie uh, was a、uh, very unique culture of that、uh, Noto Peninsula area.、Mm. It's not common or whole in Japan.、Mm. Yeah, it was、um, amazing to see the, the <laughs> priest in the, going in the snow, you know, and、uh, the, the,、mm. um, the brewer had a jacket on, and I was like, yes, it looks cold.、Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> そうそうでもあれ,あれを正式にやってる人ももう少ないんだけれど、うん、かといって、えー、と別にショーイングとしてやってるわけじゃなくて、えー、例えばもっと簡略化された形で普通にあれはまだされてます。うん、That's uh, these days uh, not so many uh, Japanese priests、uh... Don't, don't do that.、Uh, but uh, but it's not that performance, it's just、uh, it's that culture.、Mm -hmm. um, so, my next question is、um, I guess、uh, tying it back to this,、uh, this whole series about fermentation、um, or hakko.、Um, mm -hmm. So,、uh, what, what would you say is the What role does ferment? I mean, in your film, you, you sort of explain、um, and, and, and show how the process.、Um, but without fermentation, would, would it be impossible to make sake?、Um, how, how important would you say is fermentation、um, for sake production?、Mm -hmm. uh, first, me? Yeah,、uh, sure. Or, or Michael, if you want. Or... Oh, Michael. Yeah, go ahead, Michael.、Uh, it, uh, I, I, I mean, the, the genealogy of sake actually talks a lot about the importance of, of fermentation. And, and I mean, I remember, and I've not, I, I, I was familiar with、uh, the Saka shrine in Shimane and, you know, the, where the gods come for 180 days. I'm familiar、mm -hmm. with that, but what was, I found interesting was how the sparrow、mm -hmm. uh, bringing the grains and you know,、mm -hmm. the doboroku in the, in the tree. That was really interesting to me.、Um, and I, I guess I'm digressing, but I'm, I'm talking about fermentation. If you go back to Kuchikami, so mouth chewed、mm -hmm. uh, sake to the present, you know, there's, a, there's a connection <laughs> with fermentation.、Uh, Kojikin、uh, is, is this like, I think the national fungi of Japan,、yes. if I'm not mistaken.、Mm -hmm. And it, it's so important to, to sake making. It makes, it, it makes sake making so unique、uh, as, a, mm -hmm. as a beverage. It's very different than wine. It's really annoying、mm -hmm. when people call it sake,、uh, uh, sake rice wine because it's not. It's its, its own unique.、Mm -hmm. Sake is sake.、Um, mm -hmm. And It's very different than beer as well.、Um, although、mm -hmm. there are similarities in all these beverages, they're all fermented. Sake is, again, I alluded to it when I was talking, you got two microorganisms working together. And if you go back to when they were making Kimoto and all that in the Edo period, you had more, all kinds of other microorganisms in there. It's a very mystical, I shouldn't say mystical, but it's, it's a, it's a, Really organic way of making alcohol,、um, how these microorganisms are working. In, in a way, you're letting them do their thing. You're just trying to make sure that you know, they're, you're leading them on the right path. So, this is what I think is that the whole thing is that the whole thing is that the whole thing is that the w h I think、uh, without fermentation,、uh, we cannot make sake. The other thing is that the people who are in the world are in the world. So, I think one of the attractions of、uh, making sake is that、uh, we cannot control the fermentation. であと追加であのアルコールを出すためには米を
犯さないといけないんだけれども、えー、アルコールを出すために米を早く溶かすと、えー、味があまり美味しくないということで多くの酒蔵さんは、えー、発酵させたいのに、えー、その発酵をすごくゆっくりさせるために、えー発酵させないようにしながら発酵させているっていうすごくギャップがあるあの日本酒のその作り方があの面白いなってあの難しいんだけどそこにみんな頑張ってるのがすごくあの魅惑的とか神秘的に感じています。And I feel、uh, it's mysterious to making sake、uh, because uh, making a Alcohol from rice,、uh, we have to melt the rice. But if we in hurry to making sake and we hurry to melt rice,、uh, the taste becomes bad. So、uh, if you want to make a good Japanese sake, we cannot make it in hurry. We have to wait the rice melting. And it's one of the a t t r a c t i v e part of making sake. As we have to wait for it. It was a, actually a, a great part in the genealogy of sake,、uh, where Sakaguchi san、um, mm. is battling his Moromi tank.、Uh, and, you know, you know, this is an experienced sake brewer, a veteran of sake making.、Mm. And then there's still some scratching, head scratching, like,、oh, is this going to <laughs> ha- is this gonna be good? Or, you know,、mm. and that is. Really、uh, amazing to see because、uh, you know they look so sure of themselves, and then it's like, oh, is, is it is it going to work out in the end? And, and、uh, that was really interesting. The other aspect is、um, uh, you just mentioned that Kaori san,、uh, the with the rice melting, you have the starches in the sugar breaking down by the enzymes、mm-hmm. of the koji. And if it's too much, the yeast can't keep up, and then you, it creates bad flavors. If the yeast is eating too fast and the koji isn't working fast enough, then again, bad flavors. So, finding a balance between the two,、uh, and, and you're right, melting the, the rice melting slowly or at a good level with the yeast、uh, and, and everything is so difficult. And that's why you hear about the intuition of the toji. The experience,、uh, being able to, you know, it, it, it looks like they're just showing off when they're, you know, smelling or looking at the tank, but it's actually, they know what they, they see things we cannot see from that, from those many years of experience.、Mm. Yes, definitely.、Uh, you can really、um, sense the art- artistry in that sense, where they're just, just from some. You know, just from that sheer years of experience, they're just able to intuitively just be like, oh, this is, this needs three more hours, or, you know.、Um, so that leads me to my、um, next question、um, about sort of the, the next generation of, of Toji,、um, how the, the, the future of the industry is looking.、Um, Um, Kaori san,、uh, in your film,、um, you were able to introduce us to、um, some up and coming and new、um, uh, Toji masters. Or, I, I guess she was not, no, she was recognized as a, to- as, as a Toji,、um, uh, Akiko Fujita san.、Um, uh, so, do you think that to survive into the future,、um, Uh, do you see、um, women、uh, taking on more of a role、um, in、uh, sake brewing, or, or do you think that that was more of a rare, rare case? In the past, I think that I was a little bit of a sake brewing, and I was a little bit of a sake brewing. The number of the women who are making sake is increasing right now. But I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I was able to do it for two years. I
、私には無理だって思いました。ああ。As for me, after I took the movie of the, this movie, I decided I cannot be Toji as it's too hard. So, as for me, I decided I cannot be Toji as it's too hard. So, as for me, I decided I cannot be Toji as it's too hard. So, as for me, I decided I cannot be Toji as it's too hard. I truly respect and thank、uh, the woman who is,、um, who is in the sake making world as a, it's very physically and mentally hard world. Yeah,、um, Michael san,、um, from, from your um, um, visits to some other breweries,、um, have you noticed more, more participation of women in sake? Yes, I mean, I think. <clears throat> Well, first off, I have a book coming out, and I was so excited to be to map Japan and all the sake brewers where female toji or female shacho、uh, or female presidents are, are, are from. And it's a, it, looks, it, it was such a beautiful map. I can't wait to share it in the book、uh, because it means that you have all these phenomenal. Uh, sake brewers that are female that are going to lead new generations, they're going to inspire new generations. So I think it's growing. And right now, it's, I feel it's still growing slowly, but at some point,、um, you're going to have all this new generations really、uh, taking over, and, and there's going to be a, a, even a, an exponential growth.、Um, uh, and I've, I've visited、uh, several breweries, I've met Uh, quite a few female toji, and I only have the utmost respect for them because myself, a few years back, I made sake for just a few weeks, and it was so hard.、Uh, I, at the end of the, the few weeks, I was like, okay, I'm finished. I,、uh, I'm happy <laughs> to go home. It's, you, you, need, you need to be the right, not just The right person physically, but the right person mentally, because it's very, very difficult. It has to be something that you absolutely love and it's, it's, it's part of your blood. And、um, uh, so there's, there's great respect, but also I, en- it, there's envy because that person, that female Toji or, or male Toji for that matter, they, f- they are in love with sake making. That, that is the, that's their call to. Uh, to the world or whatnot.、Uh, and so、uh, I think that's it's wonderful to see. And it is growing.、Um, I have to say, if a number of years back,、uh, a few of the breweries I went to, I didn't see any females、uh, in, the, in the sake brewing. And、uh, one brewery that I had, I had worked at, I had heard that、um, I had a friend who's a female who wanted to, to work there and she wasn't allowed. So it, it was kind of, oh, that's not good. But、um, things have, are slowly changing.、Um, and you know, I think it, it's exciting. It's an exciting time, I think, for sake and,、um, and female toji or、uh, leadership、uh, from female toji. Yes.、Um, yeah, and I think um, it, it, it、um, maybe has、um, more disruptions to the world, like the p- current pandemic happened. Um, as um, I, I, I believe sake is, is growing in, in、um, popularity、um, around the world, and,、um, and interest in, in sake uh, definitely um, as, as um, people are more interested in, in washoku and Japanese food. Um, um, so, yeah, I, I believe um, uh, the um, government of Japan、um, from The Ministry of Agriculture to,、um, to uh, JETRO, they're really prioritizing、um, Nihonshu uh, sake uh, overseas. Um, so, um, do you think that'll change the, the availability of, of you know, the different varieties and、um, sake that's available around the world,、um, including um, Canada?、Um, do, you, do you think you'll see that happening, or is that already happening? What 
とても、えー、と皆さん厳しいということは言われてます。で、えー、飲食店があのみんな行けなくなったり食べに行く機会が減っちゃったのでお酒の消費量も、まあ、減ってしまったと聞いてますが、えー、それでもそうですねあの頑張って。今年も酒造りを始めたっていうのが SNS とかでもよく出てるのでみんなでなんていうかな応援できる部分があればしようという動きもあります。Uh, I、uh, heard that、uh, many of the sake world people are suffering from coronavirus because they、uh, lost the chance to sell. Uh, sake, but、uh, still, they still don't lose the passion to making sake or selling sake as a it's very、uh, fantastic thing. So,、uh, I sometimes see the net news that、uh, they still keep their energy to make sake. Ato, Eto, Atarashi, Kokoromi, to Steva, Tatuba. 私が主催したもので酒蔵さんとコラボレーションして、えー、参加している人に前もってこの小さなミニボトルで特別その時だけのお酒を送って、えー、こうやってオンライン上でみんなで当時と私のトークをしながら飲み会をしたりその時に。お酒のおつまみをオリジナルで私と当時がそれぞれ考えるとかあの今までのイベントではできなかったようなことを、えー、やってみたり、えー、その地域でしか出回っていないお酒をそのイベントだけ提供してみるとかあのでオンラインだから、えー、と今まで東京とかがメインでイベントをしてましたが。全国の人が参加できるような形でイベントを開催するような新しい動きも生まれてます。Sometimes I produced event、uh, which I and the sake breweries、uh, uh, cooperate together and、uh, we can ask us,、uh, guests to come on the online and、uh, We can share the very rare sake、uh, and、uh, sort of very pinchous stuff,、uh, which is not on the market usually, but、uh, we can、uh, buy and send them that、uh, very rare pinchous. And、uh, the good point is、uh, before the coronavirus,、uh, we Can, we could have that kind of event just in Tokyo or just in one place, but now we can share the time with、uh, all the people living in Japan. So、mm -hmm. we, can, we, don't, we don't need to choose the specific place, but we can、uh, have that kind of event、uh, everywhere、mm -hmm. in a Boisake、uh, culture together. Yeah, no, that's,、uh, that's fantastic. I mean,、mm -hmm. Definitely, people are facing hardship.、Um, but、uh, yeah, it's, it's also, there's another side to it, and, and people are trying out a lot more new things.、Mm -hmm. Yeah.、Um, yeah. How about、uh, for you, Michael? What sort of、um, insights、uh, would you be able to share? Well, I, I think the pandemic obviously has been horrible、um, for, for sake breweries.、Um, You know, I feel that,、uh, 2020 was the year of the pause. So, moving forward was very difficult to do.、Uh, and in many ways,、uh, people took a step back. But in one respect, I think、um, with all of the Zoom、um, uh, webinars that, that were going on, you could visit sake breweries all over Japan that you would not be allowed to visit. Even if you wanted to.、Uh, and so that was, I think that was really great. I think、uh, in many ways,、uh, sake breweries opened their doors to allowing people from all over the world to see what was going on inside the breweries. So,、um, from an educational element, I think、um, 
I think the growth of sake, the passion, uh, the, the growth in enthusiasts or people that really like sake has, is growing even if uh, sales are down. Um, just, mm -hmm. you know, I think once we get through the pandemic, things are just going to go right back to where they were, but now <laughs> we're going to be in a position to keep growing. Uh, at least I'm, I, I'm optimistic there about that. I also uh, find, um, I notice, and uh, Kaudi san would know more uh, about this living in Japan, but there's, um, it seems to be more collaboration between brewers in different prefectures, which is really nice to see as well. Um, some, some prefectures are really good at creating a group of brewers, but uh, now there's, there's a lot more, I feel, um, openness or to, to work with one another. And that, you know, 2020 was the year of pivoting, right? The year of trying to find what is going to work. And I think that was one of the good things that came out of, uh, of, uh, of this. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, yes, well, um, I'm going to, um, um, uh, have to ask my last question. Um, and that is, um, what sort of, um, projects are you working on now? Um, I guess, now that it's 2021, um, you probably were hunkered down last year uh, working on some things, but um, yeah, it'd be great to know um, what sort of things you're working on now, uh, Kaori san uh, First, me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <笑>あの、ヒーラー。え、というのは、うん、今、え、え、国家試験控えていて、え、それをパスしたらまあプロとしてえ、デビューする予定です。そう。聞いてるか。うん、そう。新しいことや。あ、now uh, my next dream is be a Japanese healer and uh I'm in a school or uh, I'm third grade of the specific uh acupuncture school and uh next month i'm gonna have an exam of the for the license and if i after i can pass uh i'm gonna be a professional hey <laughs> 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 And uh, the movie I made, uh, I totally took uh, four movies, but uh, for that movies, I'm gonna be, uh, of course, I, I'm a director of that movie, so I'm gonna try to spread the culture of the movie. So uh, I, I'm gonna keep on uh, that field too. Mm. 強烈に出会ったら撮影をするかもしれないけれど、映画監督で居続けるために何か撮影をしようとするタイプの監督じゃないんですね。I'm not the person to uh, stuck to be a movie director, but if I fell in love with a person or the some subject uh, which I really eager to be a, a director of the documentary film. Uh, maybe the I maybe uh, I'm gonna be, but I'm not try to find some object or person. Right. Mm. 自分の中で体を治していくとか痛みを少し和らげるっていうことに対する知識とか技術をまず手に入れたいっていう情熱が 
盛り上がっちゃったからそっちに今向かってます。During I took the movies,、uh, I got the passion to get the knowledge or the technique to cure the person.、Uh, so that's why I decided to be a professional acupuncture. 最終的にはあの治療院の横に、えー、と映画が見られたり私が撮影した、まあ、お酒とかお塩とかあと応援している農家さんとかを、まあ、あの招いてイベントをしたりとかそういうサロン文化活動のサロンと治療院を一緒にできるような空間をプロデュースしていきたいと思っています。My final dream is to open my own clinic. And next to the clinic, I want to open some, the space to、uh, show my movie and、uh, ask、um, the people who make the sake or、uh, farmers to come to that place to、uh, have some events together and share the,、um, their、uh, knowledge or culture.、Um, that's my final dream. Wonderful. That's great. I think you're on the path to getting there. So that's wonderful. Thank you.、Ah, and Michael san,、um, what sort of、um, uh, projects uh, have you been working on? I guess、uh, you did mention、um, this,、uh, this book. So, yeah, maybe you can tell us a little bit more. Well, yeah, I was lucky enough to be in Japan last year three times to finish a book with my co author,、uh, Nancy Matsumoto. Uh, and we,、um, the book was submitted to the publisher. So now we are in the waiting, the book's being laid out.、Um, it will probably be out in spring of 2022. But、um, it, it's a, almost a continuation on some of the themes that were in the genealogy of sake. So it, we're, we're following. You know, the artisanal aspect of sake making, but not just the toji, but also the rice farmer, the, the scientists that, that are looking at sake yeast, that kind of thing.、Uh, and also, people,、uh, chefs, and,、um, and, and, and people that are using sake with food and things like that. So, it, 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 we're, we're really excited about it. Um, but in the meantime, I, I'm teaching several courses.、Um, I, I teach the sake, my sake regionality course called the Sake Scholar course that starts in February. And、um, uh, JETRO, the Japan External Trade Organization,、uh, has、uh, invited me to do two food and sake seminars or webinars、mm -hmm. um, in、uh, February, which is really exciting because we're sending 300 people. Uh, a case、yeah. of sake and food、uh, to go with it.、Um, and so we'll be, we'll be able to talk pairing and food and how amazing sake is with food,、um, you know, from the comfort of your living room、uh, at a you know, at a safe distance from each other.、Um, and then、uh, the Japan、uh, Sake and Shochu Makers Association、uh, have invited me to, to do a shochu a seminar or webinar、mm -hmm. in, in March. Uh, mm -hmm. Apart from that, just teaching the WSET,、uh, the Wine Spirit Education Trust uh, uh, Saki courses as well. So, and also my duties at my restaurant. So、uh, it's going to be a busy spring, but I'm excited、uh, to keep busy、uh, mm -hmm. until this finishes, the, the pandemic finishes, and we can start traveling. I'm, I'm really dying to come back to Japan very soon. Um, uh, I miss traveling a lot. It's one of the、mm. fun aspects of being a sake sommelier. So, yeah. All right. Well,、um, I guess we're going to have to wrap it up. And、um, I really want to say thank you very much uh, to uh, Kaori san,、uh, to Michael san, to Sakurako san、um, for joining this talk.、Uh, it was really informative, and I learned a lot about the film and about sake. I really want to try Ishikawa Noto, Noto Peninsula Sake now.、Um, so, thank you very much、uh, for your valuable insights.、Um, and I hope、uh, we can share a glass,、uh, maybe a kampai、um, in the new, near future. Thank you very much. Thank you.